Hi guys and girls. Hey, we're gonna run through some stuff right now. I need to make some demos so you can see how to make the machine vise. Uh, this is one of our starting projects in Mechanical 2, and I need to make sure everyone's on the same page. So first off, this is just review. All of this stuff should come back to you relatively quickly, but we wanna make sure everyone's on the same page. So I'm gonna hit my create, start with a new drawing like always, and I'm gonna start with a 2D sketch. I'm just gonna put it on my XY plane. I'm gonna make a block, okay? I, I usually make stuff in Inventor the same way I would like machine it out of metal. Now, what I've done here, for those of you that don't know, is I clicked on a rectangle, I clicked on the origin, and as I started to drag out, I realized it wasn't gonna fit, so I literally pushed my mouse wheel down and drug, and that allowed me to pan. You can do that at pretty much any time. Now, I haven't applied any measurements to this, so I'm just gonna slap a dimension. So I've clicked a dimension, click a line. I can slap a dimension on. This thing is actually supposed to be 2.75 across the top, you know, if I go off my page, just zoom out and roll so it fits. And it is supposed to be 1.75 tall. Okay. Now that said, I'm good to go there. I will then tell it to fit to page by using the zoom all right there. And then just simply extrude it. Now here's the problem. This thing, the dimensions it gives you on the drawing sheet, don't tell you some important things. One of those being, this is a quarter inch thick plate. So literally I can type in one fourth or I can type in point two five doesn't matter same thing either way but I don't have that on the drawing sheets you actually have to go and read through everything to find it so there he is now I'm gonna put the holes in him so I just simply click on the surface doesn't matter if it's the front surface or back surface either one works because it's not oriented anyway right now and I'm gonna drop two points literally just drop two points on here I then I'm gonna put a dimension from the point to the base and make sure that is exactly one inch I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one one inch exactly. Now, this one right here is five eighths over from the side. That's 0.625. Okay. Now, on the plans, all the dimensions truncate to two decimal places. They actually all go to the to three decimal places. So if it rounds down, guys and girls, pay attention to that. It might cause you some havoc later. Uh, like the next dimension is one point. Uh, excuse me, two point one three. It's actually five eighths in from the other side. So if I do the five eighths here. 0.625. If I do a dimension that goes across here, you're going to find out it will be right, but it will show on the plans as 2.1 or 2.13 instead of 2.125. So it's 5 eighths in from each side. Got it? Now I'm just going to hit the finish sketch. That that dimension's being driven, by the way. That's why the parentheses are there. Remember that. Hole. Now it's a counter board hole, so I make sure the counter sinks on. It's not threaded, so it's just a through hole. Now if I look at this, it says it's an 82 degree hole. The top of it is actually, okay, the top of that 82 degrees is actually 0.44. So that's gonna push that hole way down into that. And it is a quarter inch through hole, I believe, yes, it's a quarter inch through hole. So at that point, I just go okay right here, and I'm done. I can move on to the next part of this, okay? So now, one thing, if I go back and I find out this was actually not, this does happen, this is actually not a quarter inch plate. I can always go back to the feature right here and I can change it if it was meant to be a one eighth inch plate, which I don't believe it was. Um, I need to go back through and read. I'm doing this on the fly, just so you all are aware. It might have actually been a 3 16th. So that's 0.1875, okay? Which actually I wouldn't be surprised if that's what it really was, but we'll figure that out later, okay? So there's the first one. I'll save that as the jaw plate and move on to the next one. So I'm just gonna go down here and go new and do a new part and go create, just like I did before. And this time I'm going to create, the one that boggles everybody is the ball on the end of the handle. The ball is actually relatively straightforward, provided, now this is the trick on it, provided you, and this is where it gets fun, you pay attention to your geometry, okay? So I'm literally going to go in here and I'm going to make a circle on the origin right here that is, how big is that ball? Uh, it's got a radius of 0.375, so it's three quarters of an inch in diameter. Got it? So there's the ball. Point. Okay. Now, can't just work off that. I have to revolve it, so I have to edit the sketch. Sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to get ahead of myself because I'm doing this on the fly. Okay. So I just draw that across, come back with my trim tool, trim off the bottom or the top, doesn't actually matter, finish that. Then I revolve it around that axis right there, and I've got the ball, okay? Now, here's where it gets weird. 
I need to cut a hole in this. Well, guys and girls, uh, that hole is 0.56 deep, and it's asymmetrical. Okay, so we got to do some math here. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to do a start a 2D sketch. I'm going to use an origin plane right here, and I'm going to pick one of the origin planes that runs through the middle of this thing. <clears throat> And I'm going to make a circle that lines up on the origin. See that green dot that pops up? See how my origin says X and Y are both 0, 0, or 0, 0, 0, 0.00, that's the origin. Now, I'm just going to click and drag out. That thing is 0.31, it's actually 2.5, but you know, we're just going to, you know, it's, it's, it's 10, 30 seconds or 5, 16, got it? Okay, so he's there. You can't see at all. I quite often do this to my view when I'm working on something like this. I'll go to a wireframe with hidden edges, and then I can do this. I hit the finish sketch, and it, okay, that is a really discon. It's an odd look. Let's just be honest. Um, it's hard to figure out what's going on sometimes like that. So I need to go in here and tell this this is an asymmetrical slice. And if I go, and here's the fun part, I go right here, this dimension, which is whichever one this is, I'm going to drag it back. Got it? That is the number I get off here. That is the distance from the center of the hole, the, the pin that holds this thing, to its end. That is 0 .187, 1, excuse me, 0 0.1875. That will be an exact fit. It won't work that way. So I literally need to go, okay, that's, by the way, that's again 3 sixteenths of an inch. Got it? So I'm going to change that to be, okay, 7. 30 seconds, and I don't want to do the math. So I'm just going to tell that to be 7, 30 seconds. This other side, I'm just going to let it run out. I don't care how far it sticks out of the hole. Got it? Oh, I did something wrong. Can you tell me what I did wrong? I forgot to click one button here. That one. Now we're good. Okay, so I've now got a hole that comes out of that, and it gives me just a little bit of clearance here for the piece to go through, for the pin. So when I try to get that in there, I can line stuff up and give me a little play. Okay? I'm going to do the same exact thing, but I'm going to change my origin to be a different axis. I'm going to go to this one. And I'm going to do a circle right there on the origin of that guy. And this hole, the cross hole, is 0.1, okay, in diameter. So it's 0.1. Okay, finish sketch. This time I just do it extrude, and I tell it to go both directions as a cut, and I make sure it comes out of the out of the thing. See how it does it? See how it shows me all of a sudden when it goes to that gray, when it clears it? I make sure it sticks out a little extra, honestly. So I go like that. Okay, so there's my piece. There is my handle, whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to tell it to go back to shaded with edges so you can see what I did. There he is, okay? That's as hard as that guy should be, okay? So I'm going to save him as the handle or the ball handle or the T-bar ball or whatever you want it, but make sure it is what it's supposed to be, okay? Now, next victim on our list, okay? I'm going to go up here to home, actually down here to home, new, and I'm going to start a new part again, and this time I'm just going to make the cross handle. So I go like this, I make a circle on the origin right there, point, and this thing is 0 0.311 in diameter, okay? Finish sketch. Extrude. Now I'm going to tell him to go two directions. You'll see why in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to be symmetrical, and he is five point. He is five point one two five long overall. So there he is. Okay. Now I'm going to go back here and go start a two D sketch, and I'm going to go back to the origins. I'm going to pick one of the ones that run through it, like so. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. There he is, and I'm going to put a circle that is right on that origin line. See how it gives me that dotted line right there? Put one right there, and he is going to be 0 0.05. Okay? I'm going to put another one on this end. 0 0.05, and I'm going to add a dimension to each of them from here, and I want to make sure I get that or center point of it. That should be 0.1875 on that one, and to this in center, to the end of it, 0.1875. Now, notice I didn't go from this end to that end because the important dimension is from this end to the center of it, not from one side to the end. It's this distance right here and this distance right here, the two critical ones. So I hit the finish sketch there. I go extrude. 
I can actually pick that guy and that guy and tell them both to be cuts. And they stick way too far through, so I'm just going to shrink them back a little bit. You know, I mean, honestly, it's, it doesn't actually matter. But I go, okay. Now, one thing that's not in the plans that I would do if I were you. Okay. Really? Oh, that's a radius of 0 0.05. Oh, I did something wrong. I was looking at that going, that doesn't seem right. Let's go edit sketch. This dimension right here should be 0.1 in both cases. That's going to change things significantly on the look, by the way. All right, finish sketch. Ah, that's a lot better. All right, now, one thing I would do on this, and it's it's up to you. It's not actually required. Actually, I want to chamfer. I would put an itty-bitty, like 0 .03125. That's a 37-inch chamfer on this end and this end of this just to help ease it into the slot. And it's not actually on the plans. But if you're going to machine it, you might as well do it so you can actually get the stupid thing to slide together. Okay? And it actually gives a little leeway to make things work. So... That's the only things I'd do there. I'd save it and move on, okay? So next part, new part. Now, if you haven't noticed, I'm starting with the most simplistic parts I can find. Like, I am using the ones that are like one or two extrusions at tops, okay? Now this has a radius. This is the washer ring that goes with the locking mechanism for the crank handle, okay? And it's a C-looking washer. You'll understand exactly what it is very shortly. But what you're going to find out is it's got a radius of 0.359. So I'm just going to tell that to be twice that size. And there's the radius of that part. I'm going to tell the inside part to be 0.4 because it's got a radius of 0.2. And I'm going to take a line right off the quadrant right there, right off that quad, straight out. Okay. And do another one right off the quad at the bottom, see if I get a yellow tick right there where they cross, boom, lock onto it, pull it out, there I'm good. I just have to use the trim function now to get rid of this piece, this piece, this chunk that sticks out, and this chunk that sticks out, finish sketch. I can then extrude this thing a whole eighth of an inch, because that's how thick it is, and I'm good to go. Okay, next, that, that's how we work with most of the stuff. Start with the simple and work our way out. Now, I've talked fast and furious, uh, mostly because I'm trying to keep this to a short video. But if you would like to, please, please, please watch it multiple times or slow it down, like three-quarter speed if you want, so you can see what I'm doing, and then pause it and do what I do. It makes it really easy to follow along. All right, thanks for your time, guys and girls, and we will see you in class.